Hey, it's been a while, I know. <laughs> I've been working on some content for GD Quest. We are working on a tower defense course there. So I'm trying to rush it so we can release it as soon as possible. But in this video, we are going to make a endless scroller. So we have a background that repeats itself indefinitely. You can see that we have, for instance, the stars on the back, which repeats themselves indefinitely. And we have the planets. Let's see if we can reach the last one. I think that there is only one left. So yeah, there's the this pink one. And after that, we start to repeat the planets all over. So starting with Saturn, then the Earth, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is a technique that we use mostly in like space shooters, as you can see here. This is my game for me, Parallax. So uh, the basic of this game, the bread and butter of this game, is to have uh, endless scroller parallax and scroller uh, background, and in this video, we are going to see how we can make one as well. But before we start this, uh, let me see. I would like to thank all my patrons for their amazing support. They are the persons that are supporting all the content on this channel. If you want more content and more quality for the videos here, you can support me on patreon.com slash pigdev. But without further ado, let's get to the video. So, uh, the basics of this technique is to use a parallax background, a node that Godot provides to us that inherits from canvas layer. So it is a canvas layer, and you can actually define the layer it is seated, it's set on uh, using the layer property. So the lower the layer, uh, the more on the back it will be, and the higher the layer, uh, more closer to this, the, the camera it will be, so it will be on top of other elements. But, uh, as you can see, it also provides some uh, other, properties, other properties, like the, the offset, the base of, offset, the base scale, which is what gives us the, um, the ability to let parallax backgrounds clue and screw slower than what the camera, uh, what the movement of the movement of the camera. So this is what we use to give this uh, feeling that the things on the back is moving is lower than things on the front of the camera or closer to the camera actually. We have some limits so we can define a limit to screw it or a limit to, to end the, the screw. So if we define for instance that uh, it will stop scrolling after two screens for instance uh, we can define this amount and after two repeats, so after it repeats itself two times, it will stop uh, repeating itself. So this is cool for like when you have um, a level full of backgrounds, of parallax backgrounds, and you want to like uh, screw uh, the forest background. So when you reach the a cavern, for instance, a cave, you can start to screw the, the cave background instead. Uh, you can also ignore the camera. I don't know what this is for. So if two elements in parallax children uh, child aren't affected by the zoom level of the camera. Okay, so this is also uh, a good thing to, to know. But uh, we don't have only that. We don't work with just the parallax background because we can actually add elements. So we can add a sprite here. So let's add a sprite. And there we have it. Let me pick the, the planets. Planets SVG, texture region, and let me select the Earth. So the Earth region. Okay, so we could do that, but instead, uh, as you can see, we don't have any way to mirror this. So after it, uh, it's cruel itself, uh, we will never see the Earth again. So instead of uh, applying the sprites and the visual elements all as child of, of as children of the parallax background, instead we are going to add them inside a parallax layer. So a parallax layer only works as a child of a parallax background, and it offers some motion properties, which uh, some of them are the, the scale. So we can use this scale to slowly move this background as well. So you can have multiple parallax layers, each one moving with 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 a slower uh, scale. 
we have an offset as well so the offset is uh, a position offset of this entire entire layer and we have the mirroring which is what we are going to use to uh, keep scrolling to keep repeating the background uh, after it finished scrolling so let's add some let's add three other sprites so let me add Saturn here not every planet here should mirror uh, actual planets but let's say that this one is I don't know uh, Uranus <laughs> I don't know uh, make it bigger this is just so we have something to work with so um, since we are going to scroll vertically uh, the mirroring should work with the y-axis to actually know um, what is the value you should use you can use a you can use guides here so if we click and drag we will start to draw a guide we can use right the edge of this last planet but this will make so that as soon as we scroll this last planet uh, immediately the earth will appear as well so let's see we have 2296 so 2996 and you can see that the earth appears right away uh, actually yeah 2 2296 so you can see that it overlaps with this last planet so you can use a greater value here so let's say we want the earth to start uh, to appear again after 3000 pixels so let's say 3000 there we have it and actually i will add another planet just so we have two uh, we have planets on both sides here so duplicate this i will use this one on the right here and let's change this scrolling to something like 4000 that should do the trick so now that we have this we can see that it is mirroring right we have the earth again here but uh it won't scroll itself automatically so we can make a script that will screw this parallax layer this parallax background automatically for us so we can keep the player inside the this there's a confined inside uh one single screen and this will allow us to have a better control on level design so we can make enemies appear uh on this gives us a way more control because we know that the player will always be always be inside the a single screen so we have uh a control of where things should appear this is very cool because uh this prevents us from allowing the players to go to the wild and explore a, a huge level without knowing if they have or not the skills to face the goals or the challenge that we are going to put on them with this kind of approach we have all the control and we can present new challenges in chronological order knowing that the player already uh, have been challenged before so we know uh, the steps that the player will go through so uh, let's create a new uh, a new script I'll make this one a building script create and what we should do is to export a speed variable which will be a float speed which is the scrolling speed and let's say by default it will be 500 and with that we can make inside the process callback oh I hate typing inside the process callback we can use the offset dot y let's see is this correct screw offset okay screw offset dot y and keep adding the scrolling speed scrolling speed based on the delta so it will move so let's save this and try uh, and test to see if we successfully applied this technique. So as you can see things are moving, we have one planet, two, and then it should repeat again. And yeah, there we have it. So this is the bread and butter 
of most scroller games, so space shooters, side scrollers, um, platform games, you can use that as well. You can use that for any uh, game that the background, uh, the environment will repeat itself indefinitely, so you don't know if we sh So you can save some time in instead of like making by hand everything in the background, you can just make one background that looks distantly and repeat itself so the player don't, don't know so the player doesn't know uh, that like the background is repeating itself. Just make sure that it is seamless, seamless, seamlessly, <laughs> seamlessly repeated. Okay. So that's it for this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing, and until the next time.